Hello, this is Andy with the Mastery of General Knowledge podcast. Thanks for joining me today. I have a special guest on the show, Lauren. And actually, Lauren is going to take over the host duties and I'm going to be the guest. Um, I think Lauren's in a, a pretty fitting person to uh, take charge here. So Lauren, welcome to the show. Appreciate you coming in. Of course, thanks for having me. Well, you're, you're welcome. And uh, the microphone is yours. Awesome, well, I'm very happy to be here talking about RVs and delamination. And I'd like to start off by asking, Andy, do you have any RVs yourself? Great question, and uh, I do have a camper van, uh, but not the traditional fiberglass sided RVs, of which uh, I've had three uh, over the course of my lifetime. So I don't have one now. Uh, maybe, maybe I've wisened up, but uh, good There's your first lesson, folks. Uh, <laughs> do a camper van instead. No. <laughs> yeah, the best RV is the one you don't own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, I'd like to know a little bit about your company, Composet Products. Not quite what you offer in terms of products yet, but about how the company formed and kind of your journey and what, what it's all about. Oh, great. Uh, yeah. Composet Products it does manufacture a repair system used to repair RV walls, roofs, and floors. Now, it came about because, as I mentioned, I've had three RVs and have done quite a bit of traveling. Mm -hmm. And... I realized maybe oh, 15 years ago that delamination was a condition that happens to these RVs and is a pretty widespread industry problem. And when I looked for a solution to repair the delamination at the time, it was back in 2011 or so, uh, I didn't come up with any good ideas other than tearing down the whole wall or completely rebuilding it. And uh, I have a background uh, in epoxies and resins and in maintenance and repair. And so I developed a process and a product that repaired the delamination on my own RV. Mm. Right, that makes a lot of sense. It was something you were seeing in your own vehicles and trying to come up with a solution for. So can you share with us what exactly is delamination? <laughs> um, well, delamination as the word and the term, you know, is a separation of materials. Uh, typically, uh, a lamination is materials typically bonded together in a stack to create a unitized uh, device out of multiple materials. Uh, plywood is a laminated uh, product and uh, carbon fiber and fiberglass and boats and these type of things are, are laminates and uh, multiple, multiple substrates bonded together to form a unitized structure. Mm -hmm. Now in the realm of RVs, uh, delamination is Typically, what we see is the plywood that's behind the fiberglass walls comes apart. Hmm. And what might cause that? Uh, you know, we find that moisture getting into the wall hmm. causes the plywood to delaminate. Now, you, you ask that question, and the like root cause is the plywood that's typically used, it's a lu Luan grade or underlayment, a very thin material, uh, but made up of anywhere from three to five plies, and we see variations. There's interior grade plywood mm -hmm. and exterior grade plywood. Okay. Uh, typically, exterior grade plywood would be used on the outside of a building behind the siding mm -hmm. or on the roof deck of a building or, or an area that's outside. Like, uh, and the glue that is, the plywood is built from, because plywood is made from multiple plies of wood, they stack up anywhere, again, three to five or more layers of wood in a factory. They apply glue to all the surfaces. Then they put this stuff in a press and you come out with your typical four by eight sheet of plywood at Home Depot in various thicknesses. Now there's, again, exterior grade that the glue is waterproof. Mm. Then there's interior grade plywood, typically used in kitchen cabinets and things like that, that does not have waterproof glue. The glue in the plywood dissolves when exposed to moisture. So that's what's happening with RV delamination. That glue is dissolving since it's close to the exterior? Yes, exactly. Now many yeah, many people, when they call, they say, you know, we're, my fiberglass is delaminating because let's let's step back just one second. A, an RV wall is, is composed of, of the following pieces. This is typically, uh, there, there's variations, but there's an inside paneling typically made of wood with a, with a vinyl coating or something, a decorative coating. And that's bonded to a layer of styrofoam that has either wood or aluminum framing. 
So styrofoam embedded in the framing, the, the decorative panels bonded, full surface bonded to the inside. Then on the outside, they had this Luan underlayment plywood, and then bonded to the plywood is the fiberglass. Mm -hmm. And that's your composite wall structure. And uh, if you can imagine a large fiberglass panel, eight and a half feet tall by 30 feet long, is a pretty good waterproof surface. A big, big sheet of fiberglass, continuous. Uh, the issue comes when you start cutting all sorts of holes in the fiberglass to install windows and doors and vents. And now you might have two or 300 lineal feet of joint that has been sealed and caulked by hand at a factory. And what we find is a certain percentage of that sealant uh, is not robust for manufacturing quality reasons, um, a whole bunch of reasons. And then water gets in around the window hits the interior plywood, you know, the, the interior mm. grade plywood, and then the plywood begins to bubble. Interesting. So an RV with no windows or doors is your best bet. <laughs> yeah, that's like a boat. Yeah. <laughs> and RVs are not boats. Yeah. No. We'll make a, we'll a two-in-one someday. I'll be more like garden sheds, to be honest, the way they're, made, they're fabricated. <laughs> so, so, sorry, it's kind of, it's kind of a, a cut down, but this is, a, this is a problem. This is an issue that's been going on for decades and the industry does not seem to want to solve it. They've tried some new things. There are some new technologies and some are built better than others, but delamination is an ongoing problem. Yeah, it sounds like it. And how widespread is it? And how did you come up with this solution? Well, we kind of covered that. I, I'm a epoxy expert and a maintenance and repair overhaul person. Mm -hmm. I worked for, for Loctite Corporation for 10 years as a maintenance repair and overhaul specialist mm -hmm. and, and Loctite sells adhesives and glues and epoxies and you know these type of things so I'm very familiar with it and the process and I'm a hands-on guy I've got a shop I fabricate I, I car restoration so I, I put my talents with my hands with the talents of my mind and some mm -hmm. good quality products and injected this epoxy resin into the wall and built a clamping system and lo and behold uh, fixed my RV. I guess I'd like to know how certain you were it was going to work? Uh, I was pretty confident, but never having tried it, uh, there's different epoxies and different substrates. And, and frankly, this is a, you know, it's not a fix all. Like the inside of the wall can be wet. It can be completely disintegrated and falling apart. It can have mold in there. Those are no-go situations. But when I open it up and let it dry out, the plies of the plywood are just floating in the breeze, but it's all there and good. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, rebonded the plywood. Now finding the right product or the right glue was a little bit of a search mm. because I, I started with off the shelf items. Yeah. So to that point, can you explain the, the process of taking this as a kind of in your garage, you know, off the shelf product to making a nationwide and, and global almost company? Well, yeah, we do sell in, in New Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, Canada, and uh, some goes into Europe also. So right. we are, yeah. Uh, so commercializing the product and uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I started my first company back in 1988. Uh, Don't say that. Well, no, how old you are. <laughs> yeah, I guess I am aging myself. I'm sorry <laughs> about that. Uh, so anyways, I've been doing things like this all my life. This product, I, uh, I, when I tried and I first used off the shelf epoxies that were available, you know, relatively available commercially. None of them were optimal. Even some of the better brands, they just mm. weren't too thick or too thin, cured mm. too fast, were too soft, didn't have temperature resistance. Because no one was making a product for this issue specifically. Specific, that is correct. Got it. So I went out into the marketplace with my contacts in the industry, the epoxy blenders and makers, and, and came up with a formula that I found worked extremely well. It had mm. all the properties I needed. And that's, that's, that's the same with any development project. When I would actually work on OEM projects for customers, um, and I worked for some other epoxy companies over this time as a distributor for, for, for Valspar at one point early on. Uh, I, I used my contacts in the industries in the process of, of product development to figure out what properties this needed to have, this resin. And then I, I, I uh, began producing it or having it produced and uh, it, works, it works very well. Good. I'm glad to hear. I, I noticed on your website, you don't sell just epoxy though. You sell what seems to be a bunch of kits based on, on what people might be looking for in their specific RV. Can you, you tell us why everything's in kit form? Absolutely. And that's a critical, important thing for the success. 
uh, success of a product, success, a consumer you know, who receives your product, their success depends on their expectation to some point. Mm. And this process is not a perfect process. Like there's manufacturing processes where everything is controlled. The temperature is controlled, the humidity, the you know, machines doing things and people with equipment. The, this process of, of a do-it-yourself or repair of delaminated walls is fairly complicated. And not everybody understands the process that maybe the way that I do. Mm -hmm. So we've laid out these kits that come with the basic tools and necessities to get them out down the road. Um, I, working for, for Loctite, I also did a bunch of training for their manufacturing reliability training group. And I was in front of uh, various ma machinists and mechanics all around the country, um, UAW, uh, Union, uh, machine repairmen and General Motors and Ford and American Axle, as well as all sorts of manufacturing facilities. And we had a kit with the various machinery adhesives and things. And it made such a huge difference to actually have the people that you're working and training with have these the, 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 the products and the accessories in their hand to learn how to do it. Mm. And many of our customers are first time customers. Um, so that's sort of the long side of it. But the next part is that I do great technical support. You're gonna find that I'm well regarded in the industry, the company is, because we pick up the phone mm. and customers call. And when they call, I, I, they have the tools in their hand. I know what they have. Mm -hmm. And when they're describing their situations, I can provide better advice using the tools that they have with them and what other tools they might need to fabricate. So that's why we do the kits. We don't sell, we're not a glue selling company. We sell a process. We sell a system for repairing RV walls. Hmm. That is really interesting. And that's, it's nice to think as somebody who myself has never done any repair on an RV, sounds like theoretically I could look at my RV, look at your selection, pick up the phone, have someone help me guide me through which kit to get, and then when it comes, guide me through that technical process? Absolutely. And you know, I'm gonna say 70% of our customers don't call, they use our video and our online support. Many people have some skills already, and but 30% do, and, and some require more assistance. Um, I do get questions, hey, is your product going to fix my RV? <laughs> And my answer is, no, only you can fix your RV. <laughs> you might use our product as a tool. Uh, but yeah, so that, that, that's, that's what we're selling as a tool, a tool kit. Got it, not a magic wand. That's correct, or a magic <laughs> potion is what I call it. We're not a magic potion, we can't fix everything. But- um, get, get you most of the way there? Absolutely, and again, um, the, from developing the product and doing the repairs myself over the course of time, and I used to buy RVs and to develop the product and shoot our videos, um, I've learned what you want in your hands right off the get-go. Mm -hmm. Shims, injection tubing, injection pipe, the, the, the proper syringes that work with the resin, mixing cups so you don't have to worry about the ratio of mm -hmm. A to B because the, the, this is a chemical that has to be mixed you know, specifically and you have a work time. Uh, there are some very technical requirements and the clamping, building a clamping device to hold the wall together. These are all critical things. So the kit comes with the base materials that you need mm -hmm. and it helps us provide the proper support so that we, you can ultimately have success. Wow, that's great. And I feel like you have all of these tools and all these kits available to people. How might they know which one to pick? As I also know you have an injectable system and a, one that's by trowel. What's the difference between those? How will people know? Great question. You know, if you go to the website, you'll learn a little bit, but I'll explain now. So the original product was an injection system where you did not take the wall apart. Mm -hmm. uh, the best case scenario is a, is a delaminated area under a window, maybe one foot by th two feet. Let's say one foot by two feet. You can remove the window, which needs to be resealed anyways, because that's the source of the leak. And the, the problem area is right in front of you, right below, or you can look right in the wall and you inject the resin into the delaminated area and then build a clamping system that presses the wall back together. So that was the original product. Now, some customers, and, and that's, we probably, that's probably 75%, maybe 80% of the applications. Um, as I was doing this over the course of time, some customers, the, the, the siding would actually peel away, like it would catch wind and customers calling and saying, hey, the thing started flapping in the breeze and on the highway, I had to get out with duct tape and I, you know, and, but the fiberglass didn't tear and the mm -hmm. wood was basically still there, maybe some small pieces missing. So in that case, the injectable resin is, is too thin. 
Oh, it would just okay. run. It would run off the side. You can't get it in there because you're you're, you're filling a it's void. Already too loose. Too loose. Correct. So Got this trowelable material, you can go in with a brush roller. We and this goes part of the kits, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 apply the material physically, up to like an eighth of an inch void or gap, and then put the fiberglass back over it. Um, and some people use both. They have situations where they need both kits, um, and and so we we have that. Hmm. Wow. Sounds like this can be a very severe problem. <laughs> oh yeah, you had mentioned how big is the problem in the industry. Yeah. I'm gonna say 50% of the used, if not more, 50 to 80% of the used RVs on a lot have some form of delamination depending on age and exposure. Um, and I'm getting wow. calls with people with 2000, you know, serious 2024, and I'm having people with 2022, 2021 calling with delamination issues. Yikes, that's not something you wanna have with a, a brand new RV. <laughs> how, how can you spot? delamination in, in used RVs? Well, that's a great, great question. Now, I had mentioned that these walls are unitized structures. So mm -hmm. you're putting fiberglass and wood and potentially aluminum and things together that all have different rates of expansion and contraction. At different temperatures, they, they expand. And metal expands when it gets hot, so does fiberglass. Mm -hmm. When they're bonded together, they behave as a unitized structure and you have a thermal rate of thermal expansion for the whole structure. Okay. As the plywood separates and the fiberglass now is not bonded tightly to the rest of the wall, the fiberglass can expand when it's warm. So on a sunny day, if you look at the side of an RV, you'll see the fiberglass bubbling out, creating a bulge. You just look mm -hmm. down the side of it. So that's the easiest way. Warm day, the sun is on it, you look and see. Now, some cases you can see it tremendously. Others, it's a little more, uh, less noticeable. Interesting. So it's there right in front of us as long as we go RV shopping on the warm day of the year. <laughs> that, that's correct. And I think I've irritated a lot of RV manufacturers and, and, and RV dealers over the course of time. Kind of kind of gotten over that because I now have, I think, well over 300 RV repair shops in the United States using our product. They, wow. they, they've come to accept it as a reasonable course of action in some cases. Uh, but I, I kind of lost where we were, but... Um, well, there's clearly a market for delamination repair, and if RV you know, manufacturers aren't willing to fix this problem at its source, people, consumers, have to find the solution somewhere. So it's it's good that you're out there, and hopefully, you know, these repair shops will continue to help with these problems, because it does sound like, like a task to do <laughs> on your own, but... Um, yeah, RVs require a tremendous amount of maintenance, and... Another, if you look at some of our other videos, I explain the different types of RVs in some mm. of the other podcasts. I also explain some of the maintenance issues as well as the insurance claims. We get called all the time. Hey, my oh. RV has water damage. The insurance company won't cover it. And, and the reason being is, you know, insurance, uh, we have an insurance adjusting uh, agency also. Uh, you know, you have to have a, a cause, a tree falls on it, a windstorm, an accident, some Normal sort of- Normal weathering doesn't count. That's correct. And, and, and usually the RV uh, manuals for, for maintenance call for caulking or sealing like twice a year. So the first thing the insurance company says, show me your receipts and your, you know, where you had it caulked and sealed every year or inspected for, for issues. You don't have that documentation, then it's a maintenance issue. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I understand both sides of the story. Customers are upset. Hey, I didn't know or this or that. Yeah. It, it rain for, you know, uh, but, you know, specific event causing specific damage. Uh, but caulk and seal is your responsibility. Interesting. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us today. And I definitely learned a lot. So Well, good. When you go RV shopping, you can uh, <laughs> go harass all the sales guys about the lamination on the RVs. But that's not really, that's not too fun. But anyway, <laughs> uh, thank you. Appreciate it, Lauren. Of course. All right. That's our podcast for today. This is Andy, masterofgeneralknowledge.com. Visit us on the website. Send us your comments and questions. Thanks for listening.